Good morning, everyone, and happy, happy Friday. Getting all my tech set up here, so give me just a minute. Our plan is to get a pretty little video for you to watch instead of watching me and Diego bop around on the screen, but we haven't gotten there yet. So hello and welcome. Happy Friday. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is my kitty cat, Mr. Diego Rivera, stopping by to say good morning. And I'm a little gleeful and excited because it's 100 Day Project Day. And, you know, I keep thinking that uh, it's going to go faster than it's going and that I'm going to be able to make more time for the 100 day project. And maybe you're feeling some of these concerns and constraints as well. So if you're brand new to painting in your PJs with Minette and cats, this channel is all about using art as a creative process for personal discovery, for growth, for doing some of that deep inner reflection. And it's been on my mind for a few years to write a book about my process and my practice. And I feel like it's finally gotten clear in my head. I have started and discarded so many different ideas and versions of the book over the last few years. And I had this insight probably two years ago, maybe it was sometime last year, that I had to draw my way through this book, not write my way through the book. And I still... At that moment, wasn't even sure what that meant. You were such a sweet boy, such a sweet boy. He's looking at me with all this love in his eyes. It's very, very distracting this morning. And just kind of in the last few weeks or months, as I started thinking about the 100 day project and what I wanted to do, I remembered how much I love a process called sketch noting or graphic recording, which is a visual way of capturing information. I've always loved mind mapping. I have a great video on how to mind map your 100 day project. So if you haven't looked at that video, it's from uh, two Fridays ago, I think. So but it's you'll find it in the there's a 100 day project playlist. And the 100 day project is a commitment to doing something creative every day for 100 days. For a lot of us creatives, that can sound a little bit boring and uh, challenging. And what I want to say to you this morning about the, the 100 day project is just start. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some days you might spend extra time making art. Some days you might spend less time and you might give up 30 days in. I've done that. I've only successfully completed this once or maybe twice and I've attempted it many times. Last year I was super consistent because I picked a project that was simple, that was um, something I loved, which was animals, creating postcards of animals. And I didn't put restrictions on anything other than size and theme. So it was an animal and it was on a little four by six postcard and it could be collage, watercolor, paint, Zentangle, doodles, all the things that I love. And I think because I included all of that variety, it really allowed the spaciousness for me to keep going. And I would often maybe sketch out four or five postcards at a time and then over the next few days, color those in or collage them or whatever. And so remember, this is your project. And even if you did two weeks worth, you probably will make more art than you have been making. And I think that's the intention is not to successfully create a hundred pieces of art, but really to lean into making your creative practice very consistent and something that you prioritize above and beyond everything else. Once I really started to prioritize art making, prioritize these morning sessions, which I do whether I'm live on the channel or not. I've been up since about 5.30. It's 7 a.m. Mountain Time now working on my, my lion painting and it's almost, it's getting close to finish. I'm excited because I already have the idea for the next painting. Does anybody else have that challenge that you're um, thinking about one, you know, you're in the process of one project and then you have ideas for five other projects? Well, it's a little bit how I'm feeling at the moment. 
And so what I'm going to do on Fridays is show my, hi Susan, good morning, is show my progress through the 100 day project and share some of the pages that I'm working on. So again, my intention for the 100 day project, and I don't think I said that yet today, is uh, maybe I did, I don't know, I'm not quite awake yet, is to write my fourth book and to draw that book more than to write the book, to let images speak louder than words. And it will be a combination of words and images, which is my favorite thing. All my art is a combination of words and images. Even my paintings up on the wall, most of them have words written right onto the canvas underneath the paintings. And so I thought about my approach to creating this book. The theme of the book is all about your creative renaissance. That's not going to be the title of the book. I'm not sure. I'm not worried about the title. Good morning, Carol and Susan and Mary. Uh, but what I know is the content. And it's going to be very similar to my year-long group coaching program, which there's a link if you're curious about what I'm up to in the world. When I'm not here on YouTube, go check out that link. Registration is open right now for a couple of more days. We have different levels for to meet different learning styles and, and different budgets. It's my favorite thing that I get to do that in my Sacred Circles community is spending time with women, helping you get really clear about where you are on your journey and where you're going. And so the book needs to really mirror that. So let me go ahead and switch my camera. So this was my final version of my planning for the 100 day project and all my ideas. I shared the draft of this in a video a couple of weeks ago. But what I wanted to show you <clears throat> was this map. So in order to write my book, I knew that I needed a clear journey and I have a linear, you know, one, two, three, four, five kind of outline for the chapters. And they're sort of academic, which is a huge part of my personality is I am an academic. I love learning and knowledge and teaching, but I'm wanting to bring the voice of my artist more to the foreground. So I had a lot of fun for the, the people that are in my Creative Renaissance program. I drew them a map of the journey that they're on. And so this map is going to help guide the, the creative aspects of my book as all as well. And it feels like it's going to be, you know, very much like lessons and kind of workbooky and color in the pictures, like I, I have ideas and I have the content and I have a lot of work to do over the next hundred days, but I'm really committed to getting this book done. I have a couple of deadlines uh, coming up for events that I would love to be able to have this book ready for. And we'll see if I get there. I'm not sure yet, but boy, am I having fun creating things like this map. Core values is a huge part of what I teach. So this was a mind map that I created about core values for my mythical makeover experience this last weekend. So I've been having a lot of fun practicing. None of these things feel like they're final drafts. So one of the great things about the 100 Day Project is that you can use whatever your personal project is as a way to practice, right? As a way to get better at something that you're working on. And last Friday, we had a lot of fun looking at drawing uh, stick figures, right? We did a lot of practice. I thought I had more than one page of them. Maybe not, doesn't matter. But we had a lot of fun drawing these. Well, I did. I don't know if anyone else did, but I had a lot of fun practicing drawing characters. And I've been doing a lot of practice in my journal uh, drawing different icons and visual concepts for ideas. Last week, I did this fun little illustration draft of who am I? And then this was the final version of that that I shared in my Mythical Makeover experience and on my social media, just as a fun way to connect with people a little bit differently. This is, you know, a version of my cartoon character of myself that I draw over and over again, and I love her. And today, what I want to do is to start to create 
the four sort of main characters um, that I call your creative renaissance archetypes. We are in the process of designing a fun new archetypal uh, personality quiz to share out into the marketplace. And you guys are going to get a sneak peek before anyone else has seen it. I haven't really uh, talked it through with my hubby yet, who's my business partner and uh, listens to all my creative, crazy ideas. Get that page just a little bit brighter there. And so you guys are going to get a, a, a little glimpse. And so again, here's that just really sketchy, capturing the ideas, looking to um, understand how can I visually represent these characters. All of my clients are like me. They're very creative. And what I've discovered over the last, you know, really 12 years since 2012 of working with creatives in a dedicated way, but growing up in a family of artists and creatives and entrepreneurs, that there are four different ways that we often approach our approach our creative journey in life and we often progress from one to the next there's the curious dabbler who has insatiable curiosity and loves trying and learning all the things but never pauses very long to go very deep into any of them I definitely have parts of my life where I still love being that curious dabbler. We have the adventure seeker who loves going deep and thrives on adventure. Then we have the introspective creator, a little more quiet, loves doing the inner work. Their heroine's journey is inner, whereas our seeker over here is on an outer path of exploring the world around them. And then finally, we have that aligned artist. And when you think about some of the amazing artists that you follow on social media that you love, who have a very clear voice, and you see their work and you go, oh my gosh, I know that's Andrea, or I know that's Robin Marie, or yeah, that must be whoever it is that you love. Um, like I really love Terry Runyon's cats. They are so adorable and so playful. And when you see one, you know it was created by her. It's very recognizable. So for me, that's that aligned artist where they're they're really creating from the inside out and they're very solid in their sort of uh, person and identity, right? And so I notice that a lot of my clients that come into my paid programs start here at that curious dabbler. We try to find a lot of answers outside of ourselves then we really understand that all of the answers are within us. So we become this introspective creator and really learning to create for ourselves. And then finally, we become that aligned artist where we're so clear about who we are. And I'm excited. I know there's a lot of words today and not as much drawing yet, but you can tell I'm really enthusiastic. So I want to use my time today to start to craft these characters and kind of bring them to life a little bit better. And my vision is that I'm going to have the character in the center of the page and then some of the words about the character around the page. And I'm not sure what that's going to look like yet, but we're continuing. I'm continuing my journey from last week of drawing these characters. And I've been practicing a lot. They're I'm trying to decide if they're all going to be the same character, my normal cartoon character I draw, or if I want them each to look a little bit different. But I'm going to start with what I know and let the idea evolve. So remember, the idea of the 100-day project is baby bites, like a step here, a step there. And so this is the first small step in that direction of creating a quiz. And the quiz will be online and publicly available, but it's also going to be a core piece of my book as well. So it felt like the place that I would invite people to start on their journey is by understanding how are you approaching your own heroine's journey. So when I thought about this uh, curious dabbler here, 
you know, she's definitely kind of surrounded by all the things. She's got a bag over her shoulder. She's got an arm full of art supplies. You know, there's kind of all these beautiful ideas floating around and there's a stack of book and flowers, all the kind of things that I'm interested in, right? And a lot of our curious dabblers are interested in. So when I start to draw these characters and I'm going to draw her pretty big here. And I say her not to exclude anyone, men resemble and uh, connect to these archetypes as well. But I draw what I know, right? And certainly it is for anyone who identifies as a woman. So she's a little hunched over. I want her head kind of tilting down here. And we're gonna maybe kind of see if we can sort of play with these arms. She's kind of stepping forward. I think I mentioned last week that I always struggle a little bit with that, you know, position of the feet, but I want her to look like she's a little bit bowed down underneath all this. weight of all the things that she's interested in and she's carrying, right? And she's kind of moving towards. So maybe we'll give a little bit of a, a stack of books here in her arm. And this is where your drawing practice comes in so handy and really understanding perspective, right? Really understanding how to draw shapes and give them dimension. So, you know, when you think about drawing a book, we think about it as a rectangle, but we can give that book or that box dimension very simply with just a few lines we can create. That's probably too thick for a book, but with just a few lines, we can really create that idea of a book or even a stack of books. Good morning, Yvonne. Right, so this is where sitting down and spending time drawing shapes, understanding uh, how to create objects. We're never, uh-oh, dang it. So yesterday in our Sacred Circles class, we did a whole lesson on uh, oil pastels and I think there's little bits of oil pastel kind of floating around. And I need to remind myself this is just a draft. It doesn't matter. And she's not quite in the center of the page. And so I'm kind of like, just, you know, calm down a minute. Take a break. Take a breath. Quiet that inner critic that's like, oh, it needs to be perfect the first time. Well, it's probably not going to be perfect till, you know, the fourth or fifth time. Right? So getting that curly hair in there. And so then when it comes to good morning, Cindy, to uh, giving starting to give her this character a face. And I also I want her to be maybe have a couple of books here and really kind of create that idea that she's sort of carrying a stack. And if you saw my office space around me there, my bookshelves are overflowing right now. And um, so I like the idea of the stack of books. I'm going to work a little bit on that idea. And maybe even like some little pieces of paper kind of floating around here. Well, now it looks like a box, which is also kind of fun. And drawing characters in profile can be a little challenging. So go back to your basic face drawing skills. I almost feel like I want this leg to have a little more personality as well. So it just takes some configuring. And I think I shared, you know, I often will draw 
like the entire stick figure underneath so I can really get the flow of the form just right. And then for her face, she's kind of looking forward into the side. So I'm going to draw where I want her face to be kind of tilting and looking. So we're not going to see as much of her face on this side as this side, which also means we're probably going to have a little bit of an ear over here. And I love earrings, so maybe we'll give her a nice bright earring. Then I'm going to come in and I always draw those glasses first. And again, that nose and that mouth, we're seeing more of it on one side than the other. So definitely still a little bit of work to do there. But again, this is about sort of crafting the, the draft and the vision. And I'm not going to get it right, right out of the gate as much as I would love to. And this one still just doesn't feel quite right. There we go. All right, a little bit of a better angle there. And again, what it feels like is she has her arms full of supplies. I don't think I want the window up here, but also this curious dabbler. So this character is the curious dabbler. And what just popped into my head is she needs a really fun name. So maybe this is Clarissa because I love alliteration. So maybe this is Cal Clarissa the Curious Dabbler. And there's just so many ideas in her head and so many different things that she wants to try and explore and play with. So, you know, in this one, maybe it's getting outside and connecting to nature is on her mind. Maybe in this one, you know, she's reading a book. Maybe in this one, we have some paintbrushes. And maybe there's a pen in this one for doing some journaling. And I've been practicing drawing tubes of paint. I'm not quite there yet, but you know, so maybe there's like a tube of paint coming out of there. And these images will all be black and white and color as well. And then maybe our curious dabbler loves to sing or dance, is inspired by music. Right, so all the different curiosity, right, is her best friend and her guide on the path. And I do kind of like this uh, big stack of books over here. I think this is really honoring that part of me that is that curious dabbler and has, you know, often too many books, too many interests, too many ideas. And we're going to just notice how I'm drawing the book underneath. I can erase the lines, but I want to be able to really get that shape of that book down on the page and give that sense of them being sort of precariously stacked here, one on top of the other. Notice that they're all leaning in the same direction. So my pages, we're seeing the pages all in the same direction. And then I've got this little vase of flowers kind of perched precariously on top of this pile of books. My husband went and did the grocery shopping yesterday and came home with the most beautiful yellow roses. 
and I definitely want to get some good pictures of them and maybe even do a fun painting of them so that's where I'm working on a lion painting I've got my book project that I'm working on and now I'm like oh but wait roses I want to paint some big abstract florals I've been wanting to tackle a much bigger painting these days the last few days just feeling that energy of wanting to be uh, very expressive in my personal painting practice right so holy moly it's almost like I need um, an easel over here or a canvas right but again it's that curious dabbler so I think about this I had one of my private coaching clients who um after she retired and I worked with her, she was, I don't know, four or five years into her retirement. And she's like, I've been a collector, a collector of, you know, supplies and classes and tools, and none of it has any meaning or direction. And so we worked together to really help her find meaning and direction and to pick the, the thing that she really loved the most and to let go of the rest, to let go of the rest that was no longer serving her. Also, as someone newly retired and, you know, looking for community, she was volunteering too much in uh, a couple of different organizations. And all of a sudden, all her personal creative time was being taken up with volunteerism. So maybe some of you resemble that. So it's this idea of Clarissa the Curious Dabbler is kind of all over the map. So this feels like a good start. I'm thinking she's going to go in the center of a page and then again around her, you know, would be some of these characteristics. So almost like she's the center of a mind map. So some of the characteristics when I think about her are insatiable curiosity. And there's a part of me that will always be this. You know, when I think about these four archetypes, I'm all of them at different moments or different areas of my life. Uh, I drive my husband crazy because I'm a terrible, well, I love people watching. And he says I stare, but I get so curious and pulled into conversations. Um, let's see. Oftentimes, these are those happy creative influencers, right, that are in the just joy of not only, I don't like that word influencer, I'll come up with a different word, but I think these are the, <clears throat> the ones that uh, get so excited about what they're up to that they're shouting from the rooftops their latest passion, their latest interest, their latest curiosity and joy. All right, so it feels like we're getting a little bit closer. Great next draft of Clarissa the Curious Dabbler. Anybody resemble Clarissa when you hear me talk about her a little bit? Do we have some Clarissas in the room today? Mm, my coffee tasted extra good this morning. All right. I'm the too many books girl. Yeah, awesome. Me too, for sure. Um, and my, my husband and I are both that way. And some days, right? Some days. Definitely a curious dabbler. I love it, right? It's, it's a little bit of everything. So the next character that I want to bring to life today is my adventure seeker. And I thank you guys. I can't thank you enough for being here and listening. I am such a verbal processor. And so the fact that you're still here and still listening means the world because it's so helpful to me to talk these things through as I draw them and bits and pieces of all of this become even more clear. So I think we've got Anna, the adventure seeker here. 
And what I love about Anna's is that Anna's thrive on adventure and new experiences. They thrive on outer explorations. They have a real zest for life and, and adventure is one of their highest core values, right? And they can be great achievers and be very goal oriented. Good morning, Els. Welcome, welcome. Yes, the books, the interest, the nature. Yes, my sister. Yes, yes, yes. I am the same. And I think we're all all four of these. We have aspects of them, but we have moments in time um, or personality characteristics that tend to have us drawn to one or the other. So this one, I think about one of my dear friends. Let me zoom back out just a little bit here. Nope. Uh, who is an amazing entrepreneur, has built this beautiful global networking organization that I'm part of. And adventure is one of her highest values and her creativity is inspired by her adventures in the world and with other people, right? And with other people. Awesome, Carol. Yeah, I love that it's relatable and it's hard to put put it to words. And a lot of times I'm trying to explain it to my husband and he's not getting it and then I'm frustrated, right? And so, you know, it's um, learning to take my time and let these ideas percolate. It's why everything is a draft and the more willing I am to put the time into the draft. So for me, writing has always been very easy and I can sit down and just write, but that has not been true with this book. The words have not flowed in the same way. And I think it's because I just didn't quite, one, have that project clear enough um, and to my approach to my craft has changed and become so much more visual over the last few years that I knew that I needed to approach this a little bit differently. So when I think of Anna the Adventure Seeker, she is really standing at the edge of a path and she's looking for which direction to go, looking for which direction to go. I could not find my gum eraser this morning. I love my gum, good old fashioned uh, gum eraser uh, because the cats, I'm Georgia, I'm sure, because this is her favorite thing, had carried it off and it was way in the corner of the studio somewhere. So I want to have connote that she's kind of, you know, standing at the edge of the path, trying to decide where she's going. She's excited about unraveling the mysteries of her adventure. But again, her tendency is to look outside of herself for the answers. And she can get a little caught up in too much time spent looking outside of herself for the answers. Because really, most of our answers to our most important questions are within. And when I was drawing this sample and thinking about these, I really wanted to include things that felt uh, symbolic. Make sure I'm getting that going. And so one of the things that when I think about someone out on an adventure is that she has a nice walking stick to support her on the journey, which then of course got me thinking about Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings and his, you know, magical staff. So maybe this is going to have some patterns and symbols carved into it. I think his had like a fun 
maybe crystal on top. So we're going to have maybe this fun staff that she's carrying to kind of support her on her journey. And of course she needs to have a backpack on packed full of all the things that she is going to need along the way. She's probably got a water bottle in there and who knows what else. And have a little bit of an old fashioned backpack. The feet aren't quite going the wrong way, so I'm almost thinking they need to go. That's a little bit better. They almost need to go straight ahead a little bit. So I need to play with the the feet a little bit. So does anyone have moments in their life where they really like I think of this as my 20 something self right who was really that adventure seeker who was looking outside of myself for the answers and it kind of feels like maybe we need some mountains off in the distance and then there's lots of room for words i don't know that she needs a lot what i drew on my sample over here was just lots of question marks because it feels like, again, she's on this path seeking the answers outside of herself. So this is Anna, the adventure seeker, taking her first step. You follow three people's videos on van life even though you could never ever do it. You know, it's so interesting you say that, uh, Cindy, when my husband and I, a couple of years ago, decided that we were going to leave Santa Barbara and sell our home there and go somewhere else, we talked about doing the van life or the RV life for a year and kind of exploring a little bit before we committed to settling down. And at the end of the day, we both are such homebodies and... Uh, just realize that, I think she needs hiking boots on, just realize that home base was really important and we would still love to, it's on the bucket list for us is to own a van uh, and to have like weekend trips and adventures, but we need a home base. A home base feels really important. And I think that's always been important to me. And when I think about, you know, the reasons for that, it's clear when I was in seventh grade, my house burned down. So we lost everything. And then my mom and stepdad rebuilt the house. And then there was a flood in the house, right? And, you know, as a, as a kid, you're just resilient and you go through things. But I think some of the instability of that time really created a need in me for, a need in me for that, you know, security and that stable home. And I have always traveled heavily, not lightly, with so many books. Good morning, Blanca. I missed you. Great to see you. I hope all is well with you and grandbaby. All right. So this is Anna, the adventure seeker. Again, uh, the, the images, like the most complicated image was the curious dabbler here, Clarissa, because there is so much happening in her life, in her mind, in her interests. But Anna, it's a simple image. And I think the uh, our introspective creator, apparently my surface down here still has all those little bits of oil pastel. It's a draft page. Stop being a perfectionist. You're a total homebody. Adventures that last a few days. Yep. Awesome, Blanca. Glad to hear that. Yes, you have to bring all your books, your art supplies, and your dogs. Well, I don't have the dog challenge um, and the cats 
have no interest in traveling with us. Maybe if we'd started when they were itty bitty, we would have had some adventure cats to, to travel with, but I don't think that would be fun for my hubby either. And Blanc, I'm glad all is well. All right, so our next one is the introspective creator. Uh, if I can spell. And the name that popped into my head was Indy. The introspective creator. What other I names are there? What other I names are there? I kind of like Indy. It's a little bit uh, gender neutral, right? It's not, these don't all have to be girly girls. I'm not a girly girl, I, but I seem to like to draw girly girls. Take a drink of water. Lots of talking this morning. So if you think of any other names that start with I, I'd love to hear your suggestions. So Indy is that contemplative spirit that she's always seeking deeper meaning in life. She loves to unravel the mysteries of her, er, his existence and find profound fulfillment within, right? They're on a interest. Ah, Izzy, that's a fun one. Izzy. Yeah, great suggestion, Cindy. Irene, Iris, those are great also. Yeah, Irene, Iris. I'm going to write all of them down in the one that lands. Ivy, oh my gosh, you guys are so good. I didn't think of any of these. Ivy, Ingrid. Yeah, beautiful. I love Izzy too, and I think I, it's Izzy the introspective, that there's something there about the way they, they flow to, together. So that one's really standing out. But uh, I love creating this way and uh, having it be a, a collective experience. So your input is most welcome. And so she is all about that quest for profound understanding of herself, and she's doing... Um, Itzel, oh, that's beautiful. Mm. That one's pretty too. Mm. Oh my gosh, so many different. Hmm. Yeah, okay, this is going to be tricky. I'll just have to sit with them for a while and see what lands, but these are all beautiful examples. So when I thought about our introspective creator, the first thing that came to mind was someone sitting quietly. Hi, Brad. Iris, I love irises too. So those are favorite flowers of mine. And uh, when we lived in Northern California many moons ago, my stepmom brought us irises from Texas that we planted in the garden. And then my mother-in-law took some of those irises to her garden in Nova Scotia. And I think they found their way all the way back to Nova Scotia with some of those bulbs. But um, I do, I love irises. These are all super fun. All right, so we've got our introspective creator here whose name will become more clear. And here we're going to draw her in kind of a meditative position. Get her crazy hair going on there. And I have to decide if I want them. Ingrid, Inanna, Ivana. Oh my gosh, so many good ones. So many good ones. I'd have to look up the symbolism of the goddess Inanna. Ivana. I have a good friend named Ivana. And I want them to look different maybe, but there's something about having them all look similar. I'm a Jean. That's another. You guys, you guys are amazing. Um, yeah, Brad, I was having trouble with my light, sweetheart, this morning and getting it to... 
brighten up a little bit so um, we might have to work on it a little bit too but I think that's a little bit better you have to come down here and work your techie magic my love all right so let's get her legs going here she's sitting crisscross applesauce kind of let the edges of her dress sort of flow over and I think I kind of want her hands maybe to sort of come together in sort of prayer and contemplation and I had a spiral on her dress just thinking about that introspective and that journey within and for now I'm just going to continue with all of them are the same character and they're all just aspects that are within each of us and she's going to have her eyes are closed just a little bit of a smile on her face she needs a little bit more of a chin here thinking about this introspective creator I'm sort of thinking about what else could go on this page you know so maybe she's sitting on a rug here land her a little bit and even though she's journeying within there's that really understanding of kind of the interconnectedness of all beings and so maybe she's going to have a tree in the background I love meditating outside with the sounds of nature all around. And maybe she has a companion that's guiding her plants and a cat. Yeah, uh, great. Um, going within is heart centered. Yes, for sure. Uh, I love that uh, Elle, I had the same thought as she needs a little animal companion. So whether it's a little cat curled up next to her or I love birds, maybe there's a little bird or a wise owl in the tree up here traveling on the journey. You wouldn't think ovals would be so hard to draw but I definitely struggle with getting them just right and maybe we're gonna have on our rug here Carol a little row of hearts to bring that symbol in hard to draw them upside down a little fine tuning there and definitely feels like we could have a candle to represent kind of the sacredness of that inner journey lighting that way within and maybe a little sleeping cat here but I'm gonna have to go look up how to draw a little sleeping cat 
but we'll put a little placeholder in here for maybe just this little kitty here. So there's our introspective creator whose name will become clear. It's going to be hard to hard to pick. And I'll probably just let that character speak to me. Might need to have a little deck of oracle cards over here. And this one needs to be maybe drawn a little bit bigger and fleshed out, but it's getting there. <coughs> Excuse me, it's getting a little more clear on the journey. It's funny, I drew her smaller. I think I was more tentative with the uh, drawing a seated figure always feels a little more challenging. Maybe I want to see her legs there and her little feet, her other little foot tucked under there. And so when I, I look at these, like this one, I felt a lot more confident with this one. So I'm noticing kind of the size differences of the characters as well. A little drink of water. And then our last one for this first draft is our aligned artist. So we need some A names. We've, we have Anna already. So Amy, Alice, Andy. Favorite A names, some vibe waves. Mm, what are you thinking, Blanca? Like maybe just some something like that with those sort of calm, peaceful energy flowing all around. Or we could have a little flow of that water as if she's setting, sitting uh, right on the edge of a flowy river. So that feels more complete, a more complete uh, drawing and it makes me wonder what else I'm gonna end up adding over here because now that's making me curious and I think you know some plant life or trees are kind of miss missing over here but she does feel blissful and I have a lot of creative friends who spend a lot of time in this energy I would like to spend more time in this energy. I'm very happy over here and I'm very happy being that uh, curious dabbler as well. And in parts of my life and my work, right, I can confidently say I am that aligned artist. Awesome, Blanca, thank you, energy waves. Great ideas, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. So our aligned artist really gets that creativity is their primary language and self-expression. And um, they love sharing and they're ready to unleash their artist energy out into the world. Their creative endeavors bring them great joy and they're confidently inspiring others through the work that they're doing. It's very important to them to really leave a legacy and they're pretty high uh, achievers. Um, let's see what we got. Autumn, Aurora, Annette, Annabelle. Those are all great as well. Annabelle, Autumn, Aurora. Aurora makes me think of Sleeping Beauty, Annette, Aurora, like also uh, meaning the dawn, right? So lots of fun things to think about here. Yeah, Alani, that's pretty. 
I had a dear, dear friend whose name was um, Alani, but with an E, Amanda, Angie, oh my gosh, so many good ones. Thank goodness this uh, chat will still be on YouTube and I can go back and look at all these fabulous suggestions. So when I think about what does it feel like in my body to be in that energy of alignment, it feels very much like a power pose. Right, so she's got hands on her hips. She's standing up very tall and straight. Her feet are straight and strong, right? And she's sort of very rooted and connected to the earth. And she's also deeply connected to the divine. And I had this sense of that all her chakras and energy centers are clear and open. I'm not sure that's quite the imagery that I want, but it's a place to start where these kind of become buttons, Aurora, the Northern Lights. Yes, yes, I would love to see the Northern Lights. Els, remind me what country are you in? Are you where the Northern Lights are? All right. So I want to maybe get those hands, make it really look like those hands are sitting on her hips. Oh, I feel kitty paws. Hi, Georgia. I'm going to come up and say hi. Come on. Are you coming up or not? Thank you. All right. Cat tail in my face. And when I think about that aligned artist, you know, her eyes, give her some bigger glasses here, her eyes are wide open, right? She really sees and she has that, you know, kind of sense of just sort of knowing who she is. But there's again that sense that she's deeply connected to the earth. Every one of these could have a tree as far as I'm concerned. But what I want to convey here with this aligned artist is confident in her creative self-expression. How many of you feel like you connect to the aligned artist? You're in Belgium. Yeah. In Belgium, one of my bestest, bestest friends who now lives in Ventura, California is from Belgium. She still likes adventure, so it still feels like, you know, she's got some nice solid boots on. And maybe everything is kind of blooming around her. So all of the things that she's worked hard for <coughs> are really coming to fruition. It feels uh, very much like life in full bloom or some of the words that are coming to me as I kind of think about this character. You feel that way when you give workshops. Yeah, me too. Well, you saw that this past weekend, Els. In my element, I love it.
And she's very grounded uh, in a different way than our introspective creator is. Like she's grounded, like she's a combination, I think, of uh, our two characters, Anna and uh, the introspective creator, right? She's very much has been that adventure seeker and she's been the ins introspective creator. She's walked the, the paths in the outer world and the inner world. And she brings that deep divine connection to spirit and to earth into the energy of everything that she's doing. Georgia is sneaking up higher and higher on the, the table here. She's half in my lap and half on the table. She loves to lie on my drawing arm. I don't know why. Let's see if you to say. I'm going to say good morning to everyone. Yes, there's Georgia trying to get as cozy as she can. No, we're not going to make kitty biscuits on my journal. All right. Just a, a minor distraction here. So any other suggestions coming to you for visuals when you think about that inner alignment where it feels like you truly are, you know, closest to your authentic or that truest version of yourself, like our aligned artists, like her voice is very clear. We might need a, a speech bubble here saying a little bit more about her. But again, sometimes it's the, the simplicity and I'm going to have fun from here going back to these and continuing to fine tune them. But what I'm appreciating uh, today is one, all the input, thank you very much, but two, also just that opportunity to talk through these characters rather than having them just in my head, not only really sort of visually bringing them to life with a little bit more clarity, but also verbally bringing them to life a little bit more in my own mind. And so again, when you're working on a creative practice or process like this, it takes a lot of drafts, right? So this was draft number one, and this is now draft number two. And I get to continue the, the journey of the draft. So hopefully by, you know, next Friday, I will have these characters complete in their, you know, final, final version as we work to um, get this book project and this quiz, quiz project going. Yeah, I love that, um, that idea of like public, right? They're visible. Um, they're out in the world, right? And they do, um, they invoke trust, but it's also, I would say others trust, but it's, um, they have a lot of self-trust in themselves. Aw, Blanca, I so appreciate you too, my friend. Are you gonna do the 100 day project this year, Blanca? Or things just feel a little bit too busy over there? I'm looking at her going, I think my adventure Seeker, she needs a hat. She needs like one of those big uh, sun hats to travel with on the journey. So that'll, you know, some of those distinguishing characteristics that kind of will help bring them all together. And sometimes when I get stuck, like with this one, I might just simply do a Google search that says confident stick figure. And that might give me a different idea about pose or, you know, what are some symbols or icons that express confidence. So this one still feels like she's not quite there yet. The others feel um, a lot more clear about where I'm going with them. And uh, this one will come, but I'm gonna go 
think about it for a while. Have an amazing weekend, everyone. As always, thank you for being here with me and Georgia and Diego and Brad in our home in Loveland, California. Appreciate each and every one of you. And I will be back Monday morning with... uh, making Monday morning sacred and our sacred circle practice. I am loving those Monday morning calls and getting my own week started from that energy of just some mindful creative expression first thing in the morning. Movement, dance, yoga, watching. I love that. A hundred days of movement. That's brilliant. Um, I could take that one on too. That would be very beneficial for sure. All right, my lovelies, thank you so much for your input. Thank you for playing along with me. And um, I hope to see you all very soon. If you're catching the replay, let me know in the comments which of these characters is speaking to you today. I'll see you guys all soon. Bye-bye.